Um, good, good to get back at it today. Uh, Tuesday practice this morning. Thought, thought our guys uh, really had a good day. I think it's probably our best Tuesday practice we've had in about a month. Uh, had a lot of energy, so that was good. You know, uh, it's good to, to get back at it after a kind of crazy ball game on Saturday. Um, thought our players really responded well and, and are excited about this game. I think we know how big of a challenge Iowa State's going to be. Um, all you got to do is watch the film. A very, very good football team. Uh, defense is the best in the Big 12. I don't think it's um, hard to see that. Um, they play really hard. Guys are in the right place. Uh, really impressed with what they're doing on defense and how they do it. And, and, you know, I think that their offense gets better and better. It grows every week. And hard football team to beat. I mean, I'm sure they're disappointed. They're they're uh, four and seven. They could have. They could very easily be seven and four, eight and three, nine and two. Had very, very many uh, close games, games that come down to the very end of the wire, and um, it just kind of hadn't gone their way. So it will be a big challenge for us Saturday. Again, I think our, our players understand that. I think that's probably one of the big reasons why we had such a good practice today is because the guys that have been in the program, they know what kind of football team this is, and, and they know, uh, you know how difficult it's going to be to, you know, to to have a chance to beat them. So again, thought we had a great day and a good way to start the week. Have you seen more defenses like theirs now in the Big 12? Is that more and more? How you see it a little bit more, you know, but nobody that really probably is as good at it as those guys. I mean, you see it more in situations as opposed to you wholesale. Um, so it's always tough to prepare for now, but they're very similar to what we do. And so I think that both offenses will have a, um, a level of comfort maybe that they wouldn't normally have just because, again, they see that from their own team every day. Um, so, you know, but they're, they're good. I mean, they're just really good at it. Guys are in the right place. And, um, you know, a coach's job is to make the, you know, the sum of the parts better than the, than the individuals are. And that's certainly the case with their defense. They've got a lot of good individuals, but they're, they just play so well together and play off of each other. Guys are in the right spot and very disciplined. And, you can tell that they're very comfortable with what they're doing schematically. So as you have the updates about Kendra and Quentin. Yeah, yeah. So Kendra uh, practiced uh, today, uh, so he'll he'll practice, and we'll kind of probably do the same thing with Quentin. We've been doing limit him on the front end of the week and get him a little bit more in uh, work on the back end. Coach, can you talk about what he has meant to this program and this run, this incredible run that you got? Talk about Quentin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, my hats off to Quentin. First of all, he has been you know pretty banged up really for about three weeks now. Um, and, you know, he's just gutted it out, really. I mean, he's hadn't been able to do much in the beginning of the week. You know, he gets really sore on Saturday. He got, he got uh, somebody fell on him this past week and, and flared up and, and couldn't finish the game. But he's, you know, he's just tough through it. I mean, it's one of those deals where he's got a, you know, pretty good little ankle sprain and, and you know, he kind of recovers first part of the week and then tries to get it loose enough to go play on Saturday. So. Obviously, we're a different team when he, when he's out there playing. I mean, he's just uh, you know he's got got an ability to make big plays. You know, the defense always has to to account for him. They got to know where he is um, when he's out there playing, and you know he's just got a knack for for making plays in critical situations. And certainly, you know, Max believes in him. He's got confidence in him, and knows that you know when we need a play, you know, he's a guy that he can throw it up, and, and he'll make it more often than he won't. And so. There's a certain level of comfort there, and he's made a bunch of big plays for us that have allowed us to win some really tight football games. And you've got to have that kind of performance from your best players, um, you know, to, to to be able to continue to win. What's the status of uh, Darius Davis? Yeah, Darius full practice today, so those, I was really encouraged by that. So good to have Darius back. Taylor will be a little limited at the beginning of the week, and but he should be back at it uh, back at it by the middle of the end. Was Kendrick just a multiple nagging things, or was there? Yeah, yeah, just kind of a couple of couple, yeah, a couple of things. Yeah, it took a pretty good little hit in the first quarter, and or excuse me, in the third quarter, and uh, you know just didn't want to just want to make sure he's in good shape. You made a comment after the game the other day about obviously you have all these tight games. It does, it does wear on you. Does affect sure does. Yeah. What does a finish like that and pulling it out maybe do for this team at this time of the season? Well, it's hard. I mean, you know, we had a, an emotional game Saturday against Texas. I mean, you know what I mean? And it's um, just kind of the, the buildup of that game and a, and a night game in Austin and, you know, just all the kind of emotional stuff. It was a big crowd and a loud crowd. And, you know, and then we had a, a long bus ride home and got home really late. So 
So that takes a little bit out of you. And then, you know, then we kind of got hit last week, kind of worst case scenario, got hit by a bunch of sickness and, and had about a dozen guys probably, or a little bit more than that, had the flu or RSV or something, went through our coaching staff pretty well. Um, you know, and so anyway, it's kind of got through that and we were able to, to get out a win on Saturday. And I think, you know, we all know, I mean, there's a, we, we, there's a very slight margin for error, you know, with this football team. I mean, we can't go out there and turn the ball over four times or, you know, have 10 penalties or something like that. I mean, we just can't play a game like that. Um, and it's just not who we are. And if we do, we're not gonna win. And that's just kind of the way it is. And so we've got to play, you know, and execute at a really high level. And you've got to play really hard. And, and we did that on, on Saturday. And, you know, you gotta give Baylor credit. I mean, they had a ton of energy that came out and you know, you could tell from the very first whistle they were they were ready to play and they were excited to play and and uh, you know, we had to, to match that. It took us a while and we kinda did and then you know, we got into a nip and tuck ball game against a good football team that that's played in a bunch of big games. I mean, I think that's the one thing that Baylor, you go back and you look at their kind of run last year, beating Oklahoma State for the Big 12 championship. You know, you go through something like that and it does give you a sense of, um, of confidence and, and you're comfortable in those type of games that we had on, on Saturday. And we're still, you know, we've been through some of those, but we're still figuring all that out. You know, we're probably not as, maybe battle-hardened as they were, just again, having gone through that last year and having a lot of guys back. Um, so anyway, it's, it's hard every week to, to play. I mean, you just look at, you know, you look at the top five teams in the country last year, you know, everybody was, was, was pretty perilous, or top six or seven, whatever it is. You know, USC was in a battle, Ohio State was in a battle, Michigan was in a battle, we were in a battle, you know, um, George Kentucky game was pretty tight. I mean, all the stuff is is hard this time of year, and it's like we've said over and over, it's hard to win every game, and, and that's why there's four teams out of 130 that have done it. it. Just has just have to have a lot of things go your way. Your numbers aren't great, but is there anything? I'm going to cut you off. No, you're good. Numbers up. Uh, the numbers aren't great. Is there anything that stands out to you on on offense for Iowa State? Well, the receiver. I mean, the receiver is really good. Got over 100 catches. They do a nice job of figuring out ways to get him the ball. He's a good football player, very, very productive. Um, you know, he's a guy that in a lot of ways can take over a game, and they're going to figure out creative ways to, to get him the ball and let him make plays. Um, and then, you know, I think the quarterback's a good player. I really do. I think he's uh, he's had some bad breaks, some tip balls, and some things that have led to some interceptions. But I think he's a he's a good player, and you know, he competes hard, and he's a good athlete. Very, very accurate uh, throwing the football. And so, you know, when you have a, a quarterback that can throw it like he can throw it, you've got a receiver that can make all the plays like this guy can, and, you know, then that's a, that's a recipe to, to be able to score some points for sure. Coach, your thoughts on um, Kendra Miller? And yeah, yeah, Kendra, is, Kendra is, in a lot of ways, like Max, has kind of been the, the heart and soul of what we want to do on offense. I mean, he's, you know, the, the funny thing about running backs is, you know, there's all these different characteristics that make good running backs. You know, you got to have, you know, speed, and you got to be elusive, and you got to have strength to finish runs, and you got to take care of the football, and you got to do all these things. Kendra's biggest trait, honestly, is is his availability. You know, that's been his best ability. He's just been there all year long. You know, he he doesn't doesn't get banged up. Um, he's when we need him, he's there. He's available, and he's. Uh, you know, and that's been the big thing for him. Uh, you know, we can count on him. And, you know, you know what you're going to get out of him. He's not going to have a lot of negative yardage runs. He's going to figure out a way to, to worst case, make two or three yards. And best case, you know, the five-yard gain turns into the eight or nine-yard gain. And he just does a great job knowing where the sticks are and helping us move the chains. And, um, and so he's been a really, really valuable part of it. And I think his toughness has been a great example for some of the younger players in the program just to see him and – the way he takes care of himself and the way that he, um, you know, plays through little nicks that inevitably running backs are going to have. I mean, that's just part of playing that position is you're going to get banged up. And that's why, you know, that's why we've tried to, from the very beginning, to, to have running back by committee in some ways, just to lighten the load for him so that when we got to this point in the season, you know, 
not only is he available, but he's also pretty fresh and pretty healthy. Coach, how much credit do you give Coach Cause with him and his staff with you guys playing so many weeks consecutively and yeah. you are still pretty healthy right now? Yeah, I mean, I need a ton of credit. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, just look at look at our team and, and the way we've been able to stay healthy. And, you know, it's funny. Look, injuries happen in football. I mean, that's something that's, that's going to happen from time to time. But, you know, there's a way that you can manage it. And it's like anything else. There's a... You know, there's the law of diminishing returns, and you have to sit here and you got to say, okay, you know, what do we have to do to give ourselves the best chance to win? And, you know, we're not very smart here. I'm not very smart. But the one thing that we try to talk about all the time is, you know, what's our strength? What do we have? Okay, what do we – every school's got a certain strength in recruiting. Every school's got a certain strength in, in their program. And, and every team has strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, and okay, what's our strengths? Well, you know, we kind of got out of spring ball, and we said, all right, we're fast. So how can we stay fast? You know, you don't want to take a fast team, practice them for three and a half hours every day, beat the heck out of them, and make them slow. You know, and so our thing has been, let's try to keep them fast. So we've tried to limit practice, and we've tried to do things from a recovery standpoint to, to keep us fast. And kind of the same thing. I mean, you want to be physical, and you have to, and the only way to be physical is to be physical in practice. And so you've got to try to manage, okay, what's, what's enough? what's enough hitting, what's enough, you know, mixing it up, and what's too much. And so, you know, I think the big thing that our players have done, though, is they've started to understand that when they leave the practice field, you know, their job, they still have a job to do. And their job is to go and to recover, to make good decisions on what they do when it comes to eating and nutrition, to supplementation, to hydration, to sleep, to rest, to recovery methods that we've given them from cold tubs. I mean, if you walk down right now in our in our athletic training room, there's going to be 50 guys in cold tubs, you know, trying to trying to recover. And so it's just, you know, a lot of things that these guys are doing that they believe helps keep them healthy and helps keep them around. And I think that, you know, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, look at the look at our team. I mean, we've been able to somehow. You know, we've had some injuries, don't get me wrong, everybody does, but, you know, we've been able to stay pretty healthy. And, uh, again, I think it's a credit to our players. It doesn't matter what we tell them, it only matters what they do. And so I think the buy-in is there, certainly cause, you know, has, they have confidence in him, and they understand that we're not going to ask him to do something that isn't going to move the needle. You know what I mean? And so that's the thing that they believe in from us is, look, if we say this is important, this is going to help you, then they, then they know it's going to move the needle, and so they'll do it. And, again, that's part of having a, a good football team to go on a run like we're on right now. It's just that those guys have got to do it. They've got to grow up, and they've got to understand how important that is to, to our football team, and they've got to take pride in, in doing all the little things, again, when you walk off the practice field to get yourself ready to go to, to practice the next day. So Coach, are you surprised at how much that's changed over the years in your coach career? How much kids are more accepting of Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I, I – I, mean, I, you know, I saw North Dallas 40, you know, and so, uh, I mean, you know, we used to, we used to walk in and get a beer in the locker room and have a beer after practice, you know, and, and so, uh, so that's the, you know, that's the deal. So it's, it's different now than it used to be. Um, not only, at, I mean, at every level. I mean, you just look at kids in high school now. I mean, I'm amazed at how, you know, how these high school kids, how hard they work and, I mean, they train year-round. You know, and so we get them, and they already have these, like, remarkable training habits. And in some cases, they overtrain, you know, and that's the biggest thing is you got to almost teach them how to, to take some, some time to recover and to rest. And that's what I'm talking to all these recruits about is they get knocked out of the playoffs. You know, they're all saying, hey, well, we want to work out. We want to do this. We want to do that. You know, my thing's always like, you need to take some time. You know what I mean? You need to go spend some time with your parents and your friends and, and get rested up and enjoy it, and, and you know, and you'll have plenty of time for that stuff. And I just think that's the way people are wired these days. And that's what's so funny. I mean, all the time people talk about kids and this and that. And I know this this generation, when it comes to football, works so much harder than my generation ever even thought about doing. I mean, these guys know how to work, and um, I mean, I didn't. I had no idea. I had no idea, you know, how hard you had to work to to be a good player. And these guys. Most of them understand that, and you know the coaches have done a great job, and they all have these trainers, and these guys know what they're doing. And I mean, these kids come to college, you know, 
with an understanding of, of all these things. And like I said, in almost the big thing that you have to do to teach them now is how to recover and when to recover. Knowing that, you, you guys plan, I'm, I'm assuming you plan for 13 games. Yeah, yeah. You have the potential for 14 or 15. Yeah. Do you modify your plans now? Has yeah, been yeah, I mean, that's that? something, yeah, we, we kind of got, you know, what we what we do typically is we, as we come out of fall camp, you know, normally we're a 22 to 24 practice, a period practice team, okay? Well, again, when we sat down and evaluated this team, our thing was, let's cut that to 18. And so normally, normally you scale back as the season goes on. Well, we scaled back at the beginning of the season. And so we were, we, we started at 18 periods, which is usually what we get to mid-season. We started with that in, in really in fall camp. Um, and so just because, again, the desire to keep the guys fresh and, and, you know, we felt like we had some depth issues and we wanted to get the best 11 guys and 22 guys to, to the game every Saturday. So... We kind of started paired back. Next year's team, if we go out and we have the kind of recruiting class and transfer additions that I think we can have, then maybe we can extend that because we're going to have more bodies that, you know. And, and so anyway, there's you, you, you change it. And so we started with less at the beginning, and then we started talking about okay, can we cut back even more? And the answer was probably no. So okay, what can we do? Well then, for us it was all right. Let's try to give these guys 30 more minutes of sleep. So, you know, two weeks ago, we started giving them a little more sleep. Then, you know, we gave them a couple of Sundays off, the last three Sundays. Um, and so it's, you know, we're always tinkering and adjusting and trying to, to figure out the best way to get our guys to the game fresh. And then this week, you know, they don't have class, so we backed everything back an hour. And so now they're getting an hour and a half more sleep per day than they were getting, you know, early in the year. And so, again, we think that's gonna add up and, and be significant. And, allow us to be more rested and certainly we felt like the last two weeks it did you know our guys seemed a little bit more refreshed and today with that extra hour I think made a big difference I think that's probably part of the reason why we had such a good practice. Coach, Coach what do you think about Max Hogan and the season that he's put together do you believe he deserves to be in New York for the high Yeah no I definitely do yeah I mean I, I don't think there's any question that, that Max deserves that and I think you know for a couple of reasons I think you know I don't pretend to I'm not a Heisman Trophy expert. I'm not a voter. Um, I don't. I, I usually let people that vote on things vote. That's their job. My job is to coach our football team, and so my focus is going to be on that. But I just think if you look at the, you know, the entirety of of, you know, what's happened to us this season, it's hard not to go. Well, there's got to be a reason this happened. You know, a reason why a team that's picked seventh in the league you know, is, is in the position that we're in. And so, you know, I do think that you have to, to, to say, okay, look, it's almost like an act of God <laughs> that this has happened. And, and then you go, so, okay, well, what's, what's, why? And you go, well, here's this guy that's, you know, played incredibly well at an incredibly important position. And, um, and then, you, you know, and if you watch this play, you can't help but notice, you know, what he means to our team. You know, just the, the confidence, the uh, belief that he has, you know, in in this team and the players and our scheme and what we're trying to do, um, and then just the the number of plays that he makes during the game. And a lot of them are Max's best best plays, in my opinion, aren't even in the statistics. You know what I mean? They're things that that will never show up in the stat line. It's decisions that he makes. It's you know, leadership that he provides, it's crucial plays in, in critical situations that people never notice. You know, it's all these little things that he does for us. And but at the end of the day, it's just probably most importantly, it's just our guys undying belief in him and our guys trying to to play their tails off for him because they have so much respect and admiration for what he brings to, to our football program every day. And so, you know, when you sit down and you go, okay, who's moved the needle the most for some program that's in this conversation, I mean, I think it's gotta be Max Duggan. I just believe that. And what the requirements for the award are, I mean, I've heard it described a bunch of different ways, but, you know, I just think it's, you know, to me it's, you know, who's meant the most to, to that particular football team? And then who's raised that team 
to greatness. And, and when you consider that, I mean, I think it's, I think he's certainly got to be part of the conversation. And, and I think it'll be a tragedy if he's not, because again, if you follow TCU football, I think everybody in this room knows what he's doing for our program. Sonny, 